Hey guys, King Gath here with the first regular patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 1.0.1, which I'm calling The Resurrection. Um, so we got a lot to talk about today. I want to talk a little bit about the patch cycle. I want to talk about uh, some of the differences between Xbox and PC and uh, what you guys can expect. And then, of course, we got to cover some of the major things that are in this particular patch. Obviously, with something like the resurrection, you guys probably perked your interest to know what the hell I added that would give a, that kind of name. So we'll talk about that in a moment. First off, let's thank some patrons. So thank you guys all who have been joining up. Our uh, Patreon page has blown up. Uh, since STS 2 was announced, and now even more so after it released, and I fell way behind on giving shout-outs to, to new patrons, so I'm not going to do all of it once, or we'll be here forever, but I do want to shout-out to a handful of you, and then I will catch up this list slowly o over the next few weeks as we make more and more videos, because you guys are going to want to know about all the updates that are coming to some settlements, too from us as well as from the community because there's loads of add-on packs which if you didn't see my news video I dropped on Tuesday cover some of those add-on packs that have released in the last couple of weeks all right so shout outs to patrons Cleo Moransky Jeremy Peck Andy Lloyd your brain Elias ooh, I want to say Aroha Aroha mm, I'm sorry buddy sorry Elias I am butchering that uh, any of you guys out there if you've got a name that you know Americans are going to struggle with feel free to PM me a message on Patreon with how to pronounce it and say, here you go, dummy, this is how you say it. And I'll, I'll try and uh, remember to use that instead of just figuring it out on the fly. Uh, Nick Moe, Joshua Thomas, Sean Beddingfield, Cat in Space, Timothy, Daniel DeWolf, Carl Zopf, Jasper Weiher. Oh, there's another one. Weiher, Weiher. Mm, it looks very uh, non-American. Uh, Mr. Stranger, Ben, Jessica Ferguson, Harp68, Michelle Gibson. Thank you all, and thank you everybody else who signed up on the Patreon. Don't worry, I will promise I will get to you guys and get you shouted out because you deserve that and much more. The funding that you guys are providing through the Patreon account is letting us do more and more and lets us pay for all our server space so we can have cooler stuff like nicer websites and we can have uh, better software for our team. We can make sure that uh, nobody on the team has to dig into their pockets to cover the expenses of building and maintaining this mod. And the goal of this really is to build up a community. We're not just looking to create this mod that dies when everyone gives up on Fallout 4. We're trying to build this up into something bigger so that it can live beyond just this mod. And uh, so far, I think we're doing a darn good job. The community around some settlements is fantastic. They've been helping each other and building up all sorts of cool stuff. A lot of them have turned into just mod authors in general. It's, it's awesome to see. And uh, those of you guys uh, who are supporting us through Patreon are helping encourage all of that. So if you'd like to join up, just know that the funds are just not going into my pocket. I just find ways to reinvest them into making our little community stronger or making the mods better. All right, let's talk about that patch cycle. So I just did a bunch of hot fixes, and that is not something I intend to keep doing in the sense that, uh, well, hopefully we just don't have enough issues that require that, but also because it tends to lead to some sloppy development, which we just don't want. So instead, what we're going to do going forward is uh, a bi-weekly patch cycle. Those of you guys who have been longtime followers of some settlements know that that's generally how I like to do things. I think for we, we made it about three years straight on that with some settlements one, and we'd like to try the same for SS2. So what that means is basically I will develop fixes and quality of life and content for a week, and then we hand it off to our testers for another week. They kick the tires on it, and if everything goes well, we release it. Now, one thing we're going to do differently with SS2 versus SS1 is we're going to try and do public betas for all of that stuff. So rather than me just giving it to the handful of people who are our committed beta testers, I'm going to put post it. Well, I am going to still give it to them because they will be more thorough on their testing, but I'm also going to post it on the forums with patch notes early so that uh, those of you guys out there who want to try things in advance can check it out because sometimes there'll be things like mod conflicts or it might just be a certain scenario or sequence of events that happened in your game that didn't happen for any of our testers might reveal something a little bit different. So if you're interested in doing public betas, I will always be posting them to a Google Drive with an open share link and then I post that link along with patch notes on our news section of the forum. So if you go to simsettlements2.com, click on forums and then latest news, you'll see all of my posts. The You'll see a whole bunch of them right now for uh, six or seven little betas we did after the G hotfix. And uh, I'll continue to do that as we come up with content. The exception will be when we start to get into story content patches. Those are gonna be private betas only. But when we are doing, and that's mostly because we just don't want to spoil the story for you guys. But for uh, these fixes that are just bug fixes or quality of life improvements, I'm happy to just share those openly as quickly as possible to get more feedback on those and find the issues so that when we do the proper release, 
we uh, eliminate the likelihood of making things worse for you guys. So for those of you guys who are looking to try out those public betas, you know, just be careful. Make sure you're always backing up your saves and everything because these are betas. It's just us kind of hoping we fix the problem. You know, we tested ourselves a couple of times and then if it looks decent, we ship it out there and then it's kind of hard to tell what will work or not in the crazy landscape that is Fallout 4 modding. You know, you tie in all your mods, all the crazy things that could happen to your save file. So again, back up your saves before you try those public betas, but I will continue to put those out as we come up with stuff. And then if you guys find emergency issues, things that are causing your game to be unstable or making it impossible for you to proceed through the quests, I will uh, try and put out those public betas for those particular issues as soon as I can. Okay, so bi-weekly patch schedule, public betas, covered those. Let's talk about some of this uh, this patch name. So I called it the resurrection because I added a new system to SS2 that I call save file resurrection. And basically, SS2 is a extraordinarily complex mod. There are layers and layers of systems going on. There's all this, this quest content. And so it can often run into a bug many of you guys have seen and uh, many people have blamed on the creation club, which it may be, we're not sure exactly what causes this, but depending on how many mods and which mods you have loaded, the game can just fail to start certain quests. And so a lot of you guys have reported that you will go in and you'll build a radio beacon and the stranger from our main quest line never actually appears. And part of this is happening because of this bug. This appears to be some sort of game engine bug. We don't know the exact trigger. Like I said, some people blame it on certain creation club content, although I haven't been able to replicate that. And the uh, issue appears to be just something in the game prevents startup of certain quests. And so... To rectify that, we basically have added a small little script that runs at the start of your new games. And after about two minutes after you've loaded the game, if it hasn't detected that the SS2 startup has finished or even started, it will give you a warning. It's going to say something like the uh, SS2 detected the, that the framework failed to start. It's going to go ahead and try it now. It'll give you another message when it's finished, and then you'll be safe to play again. So if you get that message, you ran into this bug, you probably have a lot of issues. If you haven't invested a lot of time in your save file yet, and you get this resurrection warning, I would actually recommend you start over and uh, try and figure out what's wrong with your load order, because that is almost a guaranteed sign that you've got too many mods running with quests, or you've got some sort of uh, problem, like one, a common problem I've seen with people is some of their mods are overwriting the, their F4SE scripts, and that causes all sorts of bad issues. So there, it's definitely a warning sign. You should be looking at your load order and considering starting a new playthrough if you're not too far invested. But in our tests so far, people who have had the resurrection come up have been able to continue playing safely and continue to enjoy their some settlements to questing without much issue after that. But it's hard to say what will happen long term because it's not a good thing when the game fails to launch certain quests. We now, and when I say quests... I'm not just talking about those things that give you objectives and experience. There are these controller objects in the background. They run a lot of gameplay systems for Fallout 4 that are also called quests. And those can fail to start, and that it can be catastrophic. So just be aware of that. This, this new patch will try and help some of you guys who had that issue and didn't even know about it. But if you're not invested in your save, I would recommend it's a good time to go investigate your load order and maybe start a fresh one. Okay, so some other stuff we can talk about. We added a new skip quest system, and this is a console command. I will post it below in the uh, description. And basically what the console command allows you to do is make the game simulate that you went through our main quest up to a certain point. Now the benefits of this are, one, if you get stuck on a quest and something has broken horribly, you can't figure out how to do it, this will allow it to complete. Now I'm sure if any of you guys have engaged on our forums, you know that we highly advise not using stage skipping commands in the console because some of our stuff can get blocked off. Some of our characters can kind of get stuck in scenes and it become it can be, make things worse to do that. So this system is a safe way to skip ahead on quests. The other benefit will be for those of you guys who are you know doing your second or third playthroughs, you're, you're just not interested in going through the whole quest line again, you can still go through and, and get uh, the unlocks up to the point that you're interested in. And this way you can do it without bypassing um, everything with the cheat commands. Now we did also add in one of the hotfixes a cheat command called unlock all story content, which will basically trigger all of the unlocks you would have got by going through our main quest without unlocking all the all the stuff that's normally only locked until you play enough sim settlements too so for those of you who haven't gotten deep enough into it there is a ton of content in sim settlements 2 that unlocks as you play more of the mods so as you build more buildings as you get hit certain thresholds you level them up to a certain level in plots you build you know x number of industrial or x number of commercial you'll start unlocking things or as you 
claim more settlement. So the deeper you go into the settlement system, the more content you will find. And the cheat commands will bypass all of that gameplay. Those little dopamine hits you get by unlocking things are all wiped out if you use those cheat commands. So they're not, they don't give the best experience. And so the skip quests will be an alternative to that. It'll be a way for you to uh, make sure that all the characters still appear. So your old Paul and Lily and uh, and Jake will all appear for you and still set up everything as if you went through the quest. So it's kind of like a little fast forward button you can do in your save. And I will put that in the description on how you can activate that. And then next up, let's talk about Xbox versus PC. So there are some differences between those two versions. And over time, the Xbox and PC version are going to start to diverge. And that is due to a severe file size limitation on Xbox. So many of you guys on Xbox are aware of the 2 gig limit of total mods. But some of you might not be aware of the individual mod being limited to 1 gigabyte. So we are right at that. Our mod clocks in at right around a gigabyte. And we are scrambling to make more space so that we continue to add more content. And what we're finding is that there are certain pieces of content that are just going to have to be cut. So for PC users, we started up another mod called SS2 Extended, which you can find on the Nexus page under the optional files. And SX2 Extended not only has uh, some additional cut content that is not available on Xbox, but it also has some much larger files that will probably lead to a more stable and optimized game for you. For example, all of our NPC custom texture meshes are stored in SS2 Extended. Um, for those of you guys who are familiar with modding, it's called the Face Gen Data. That is all only available in those. Without that, you can still run the mod, but there can be some uh, problems with uh, optimization, with, with having too many custom characters in an area. And so for PC users, grab that SS2 Extended mod. It will improve your gameplay experience. And you get some cool new content, including some new dogs. So you guys have seen, we advertised in our trailers and stuff, our French Bulldog. We actually have a bunch of different dogs. And for Xbox users, you guys get three dogs. And for PC players, you guys now, as of 1.01, .01, have eight different new dog models. And these are all thanks to the fried turkey who did an awesome job bringing small dogs to the Commonwealth. And for those of you guys who are who hate the dogs, you maybe you hate those Creation Club dogs, you don't want to see these uh, dogs because it feels super unimmersive. Don't worry, they don't just appear in your game. You only access them through our pet store, which is an unlockable in uh, Sim Settlements. When you build enough commercial, you'll eventually unlock the uh, pet store in there. You can purchase all of these new fancy dogs that we have available. So we've got now in the base mod of Sim Settlements 2, we've got French Bulldogs, we've got uh, Scottish Terriers, and we have Jack Russell Terriers. And the reason for those three in particular, because uh, three of us on the team had small dogs. And so those are all modeled after our particular pooches. And then the new five are, we now have a Chihuahua, a Corgi, a Beagle, a Boston Terrier, and who am I forgetting? Oh, a Pug and a Pug. I know everybody kept calling our Frenchie a Pug in the trailer. And now we have an actual Pug, so you can see the difference between the two. Some of you still won't see the difference, but that's okay. So lots of dogs, and there's multiple skins for each of them. Really, really cool feature. Again, big shout out to the Fried Turkey for hooking us up with those. It was such a cool addition to the mod. And uh, I know some of you guys are immediately going to ask, well, can you do a solo release of that? And that is something we are looking into because that would be a way for Xbox players to get access to all of the dog breeds. But we would want to do it a little bit differently if we do a solo release for that. So we'll talk about that in the future. Okay. Um, other than that, Xbox players, the, one of the ways we have been making additional space on there is to do things like texture compression or to cut some content that was not super important. But I'm here to tell you with 1.01, .01, we actually restored some cut content thanks to some clever file compression. So with uh, with after compressing a bunch of textures, we saved a fair amount of space and we were able to restore the dynamic soundscape. That's a personal favorite feature of mine in SS. So I'm glad we were able to bring that back for Xbox players. That is a system that makes it so that as you build more plots and they start to level up, the sound of the, the ambient sound in your settlement will start to evolve with it to make it sound more like it matches what's going on in your settlement. So if you've got a lot of industrial, you'll hear a lot more mechanical noises. If you've got a lot of high level commercial and uh, residential, it'll start to have kind of that city ambience, like a lot of people talking and having a good time. Um, and so we've got a lot of that uh, all plugged right back into Xbox. Now it should kick itself back on automatically when you boot up next with the 1.01 .01 patch. We also had another place we were cutting some files for Xbox players to make space with some of the combat dialogue for some of our custom NPCs. Um, another one we cut, and this one has remained cut, is uh, the the some of the outfits for the custom NPCs. We have cu we have custom outfits for almost every single one of our NPCs to make sure that they stand out. <coughs> Excuse me, and a lot of those 
we're cutting on Xbox, and we're looking to slowly restore all of that. The goal is to ultimately compress enough textures, find other ways we can cut content in order to make space so that you guys can have as close to the PC experience as possible, with the exception of that SS2 extended stuff. So things like those extra dogs. Um, there's also extra cats at the pet store too, um, although those are just texture swaps that were provided by a wonderful mod author who did the craftable cats mod. Um, anyway, there are so there's a lot of content like that that's going to remain PC exclusive, but we want the uh, core features in the mod to uh, be available to you guys on Xbox as well. So speaking of one of the thing with Xbox is I do have what I call the SS2 PTR edition on Bethesda.net. This is in the work in progress section. You can favorite this. And uh, basically you can install that version instead of SS2 on your Xbox. And I will be updating that whenever I post those public betas. So that was kind of a beta version of that. Now, this is not probably for everybody because those of you guys who are really engaged in your Xbox playthroughs, you have no real way to roll back. You're kind of stuck with that version if you grab it. But for those of you who are adventurous and want to help out with Xbox testing and keeping us posted on how things are working, that could be an option for you. You just didn't, don't write, don't overwrite your save if you load up that beta, the PTR version, and it makes things worse for you. Just report what issues you come across. So hopefully we'll find some folks on Xbox willing to uh, to be the sacrificial lambs and uh, check into that stuff for us. But that is available. I'll try to remember to link that down in the description as well. All right, guys. And now my favorite part of every patch video, and that's giving away a t-shirt. So those of you guys who stuck through and made it through all of my rambling, um, I am going to give you an opportunity to get a some settlements t-shirt. We've got them available for all of the original for the original SS logo, the expansions, and now the SS2 logo. So whatever one you'd want, you have open you are open to grab. Um, but what I need you guys to do is comment below and include the following hashtag. But make sure you don't just put the hashtag. If if I find any with just that hashtag, I'm going to ignore those. Um, but comment with some things, you know, something you like about the mod, something you want to see in the mod. You can post a bug report if you want, although you're gonna get much better feedback with bug reports if you just head to our forums, because that's where we've got some support people ready to go um, speaking of mad shout out to all of our support team you guys are freaking amazing um, I would not have survived the last two weeks without the help from our support team um, but anyway back to the hashtag the uh, hashtag for this week is hashtag chapter one complete because that was my goal in all of the hot fixing and all about 1.01 is to make sure that all of you guys could play through chapter one successfully so you can access to all that content and see all the hard work that the quest and uh, voice team put into that i hope you guys are enjoying it and i hope you guys are excited for chapter two because we uh, have started development on that i don't have a timeline for that I'm not going to discuss it you guys will just get basically we're treating those the chapters kind of like expansions so one day you're just going to get a teaser trailer from me uh, that, that uh, lets you know it's on the horizon. But, all right. All that said, guys, take care and enjoy the mods. <laughs>